Ladies and gentlemen, please find your seats. Our ceremony will begin shortly. Remember to silence your cell phones for the duration of the ceremony. Thank you. Is it as hot? I think so. Turned it up. It was all the way a little bit more. Okay. <laughs> Post the side boys. <laughs> Welcome to the Center for CBs and Facilities Engineering and Naval Civil Engineer Corps Officer School Change of Command. This morning, Captain Peter J. Maculin will be relieved as Commander and Commanding Officer by Captain Jeffrey C. Davini. The origins of the modern Naval Change of Command ceremony are drawn from the customs of the earliest days of seafaring men. A unique and time-honored tradition, it restates the authority of command. The ceremony is conducted before the command's assembled company, honored guests, and dignitaries. The Change of Command is unique in the world today in that it is a formal transfer of total responsibility, authority, and accountability of the command from one individual to another. The bosun's pipe, you will hear, was originally used to call the stroke in ancient Roman warships to ensure rowers on each side rowed in unison. It has a long history as a symbol of office and as both a practical instrument for conveying orders and playing music to pass time at sea. Piping the side originated in the days of sail when commanding officers were hoisted aboard ships in a net or basket. The center of the deck always had several able-bodied seamen or side boys standing by to assist in the handling of that net. As officers increased in rank, they earned more money and tended to be <clears throat> healthier. <laughs> the more senior an officer became, the more side boys were required to hoist him aboard the ship. As a result of this duty, we use side boys today to render honors to the official party. The side boys for today's ceremony are Lieutenant Commander Forrest Brown, Lieutenant Commander Ethan Meckel, Builder Chief Sean Harper, Utilities Chief Kyle Ciaprina, Constructionman Senior Chief Christopher Johnson, Engineering Aid Chief Kaylee Revilla. The time orderly is Builder Chief Derek Miller. The Honors Boson is Boson's Mate Chief Shane Drobney. Our band playing for today's ceremony is the Navy Band Southwest Brass Quintet, and singing the national anthem will be Construction Mechanic First Class Jonathan Hughes. Color Guard is provided by Naval Construction Training Command, Port Wyneme, and today's members of the Color Guard are Construction Electrician, First Class, Brogdon Hines, Construction Mechanic, First Class, David Avant, Engineering Aid, First Class, Andrew French, and Construction Mechanic, Second Class, Alexander Hammer. Good morning, I'm Commander Amy Honick, the Command's Executive Officer and Master of Ceremonies for today's event. Ladies and gentlemen, please arise for the arrival of the official party and sing of the national anthem and remain standing for the invocation. 
Time orderly, sound four bells. Captain, Civil Engineer Corps, United States Navy, arriving. Time orderly, sound four bells. Center for Seabees and Facilities Engineering and Naval Civil Engineer Corps Officer School arriving. Time orderly, sound six bells. Naval Facilities Engineering Systems Command arriving. Our national anthem. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light? Oh, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose bright stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in Through the night, that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free? Retire the colors.
Pastor Jacob Bundy will now offer the invocation. Let us pray. Father, as we prepare for this change of command that will take place later this morning, we have much to thank you for, and we have much to ask for your assistance with as well. We thank you first off for Captain Pete Maculin and his wife, Teresa. We thank you for the years of service that they have given to our country, and we thank you for the years of service that they have given to this command. Lord, you tell us that when the right person is in authority in your word, that the people underneath rejoice. And we thank you for the wise, integrity-filled leadership that Pete has provided this command with during his time of service here. We recognize your hand at work in his life, and we wish him the best as he transitions into the next rule that you have ordained for him in his life. Furthermore, Lord, we thank you for bringing Captain Jeff Devinney and his wife Heather to step into the role that the Maculans are vacating. We thank you for this family, and we pray for your help and guidance in their lives as they serve at this command over the coming years. Father, you once again tell us in your word that if any person desires wisdom, he can ask you for it, and you will give it to him. This morning, I come before you and ask that you would bless Jeff Devinney with wisdom and courage and moral integrity as he transitions into this position of leadership that you have led him to at this command. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for these families, and we thank you for the gift of your son who died for us so that we might be brought into a relationship with you. Bless the remainder of this ceremony. It is in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you, Pastor. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is now my pleasure to introduce the host of today's Change of Command ceremony, Captain Peter J. Maculin, Commander, Center for Seabees and Facilities Engineering, and Commanding Officer, Naval Civil Engineer Corps Officer School. Good morning. How's everyone doing today? Good? Do we need to roll some coffee out here? How's everyone doing today? Good. All right, there we go. I expect more from you, you haws in the back over there. Gonzo. <laughs> All right, hey, good morning and welcome to everyone uh, to Morrell Hall. This building is named after the father of the Seabees, Admiral Ben Morrell. It's home to several critical entities to support our mission as Naval Civil Engineers, but today is the location for the change of command of the Center for Seabees and Facilities Engineering, as well as the Civil Engineer Corps Officer School. I'd like to extend a welcome to friends and family here, both in person and those viewing us on DVIDs, those coming from close and from afar. We're happy that you're all able to join us today. I'd like to take a moment, though, to uh, recognize our special guests. So first, I want to thank uh, Admiral Vanderlei for being our guest speaker this morning. Uh, we recognize how busy you are and the demands of your time. And thank you for taking the time to be the motivational and, and inspirational part. That's a, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see. we'll see later. <laughs> I'm going to set the stage. Motivational and inspirational part of today's uh, ceremony. I'd also like to thank Pastor Bundy for the invocation, uh, Boatswain's mate, Chief Shane Drobny for the ceremonial piping, the Navy Southwest Brass Quintet for their instrumental uh, accompaniment, the Color Guard for presenting the colors, CM1 Hughes for singing the anthem, and all the CBs from NCTC and NMCB5 that worked long and hard to go ahead and set today's ceremony up so it would be a success. Last. I'd certainly be remiss if I did not thank the incredibly hardworking staff from CSFE and Seacoast that led up to the set, uh, set up and participating in today's ceremony. Other special guests that joined us here today are Naval Construction Group 1, NAFAC Engineering and Expeditionary Warfare Center, Naval Construction Training Center Port Wainimi, Naval Construction Training Center Gulfport, Center for Seabees and Facilities Engineering Detachment Fort Leonardwood, Center for Seabees and Facilities Engineering Detachment Shepherd Air Force Base, Naval Mobile Construction Battalions 3 and 5, 
and underwater construction team too. It's now my honor to introduce our guest speaker. Rear Admiral Vandalay has had uh, quite the impressive career. He's got his full bio in there, but just uh, to hit the highlights, he's had several operational tours, USS Michigan, NMCB-7, NMCB-4, and he's commanded at multiple levels in the, uh, in the armed forces. Again, NMCB-4, NAFAC Engineering Systems Command Midland, NAFAC Engineering Systems Command Atlantic, and NAFAC Engineering Systems Command Pacific, and of course, Admiral Vandalay is the 46th commander of uh, NAFAC and the Chief of Civil Engineers. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Dean Vandalay. Well, good morning, everybody, and it's great to be here in Port Wainimi. Um, sunny Port Wainimi sometimes, sometimes like this, but I'm a Washington boy myself, and I find the clouds comforting, so it's great to be here. Um, I won't uh, repeat all the guests here, but uh, Admiral Benaji and Liz, great to see you guys. Heather and Teresa and, and all your families, you know, really important, obviously, to have you guys here. And, uh, and I'll call out some uh, past SECO COs. I see Chris Kurgan in the crowd and also uh, Captain Pete Saunders. So thank you so much for being here. Um, it's a familiar place for all of us. We all love coming to Port Wainini because this is where every CEC officer begins their career. So I think all of us have, have a connection here to, uh, to Port Wainini and obviously home of the West Coast CB. So it's great to be here. Um, it's also a really important place. Uh, people are, are fundamental to what we do. And this is where you know, those people get developed and trained and prepared for the really important and difficult jobs they do. And uh, so it's you know, really my pleasure to be here and, and why I made the effort to be here for that reason, as well as because a couple of my very favorite, favorite people in the world are, are here today with uh, Jeff Davini and Pete Maculin. And so when I knew that those two were changing command, I, I made an effort to be here because uh, they're good folks to hang out with. Um, Seacoast is also a really, you know, I talked about how Seacoast is a really important command because of the influence it has on our community and on everything that we do. So, be, so what we've done historically is the folks that come to command Seacoast are typically towards the end of their career. Not that they're old. They have a lot of, a lot of, a lot of fire left, but it's folks that have some years under their belt that really know our business, but also have the charisma to actually be able to communicate that. That's not always super easy to find in our community. So we're full of engineers and you can make engineer jokes all day, right? The, an extroverted engineer is the guy who looks at the other person's shoes. Um, so we have a lot of that in our community. Some of us, you know, learn to fake it with time and, and learn how to, how to speak publicly. But uh, sometimes we find people that really sincerely uh, have that in them and they don't have to fake it. And, and I think we found a couple of those today. You know, Pete will tell you it's because he's an architect and not an engineer. So he, he's very proud of that. And, and you do see some of that in him. He, he does sincerely, I think, enjoy um, speaking and being charismatic. <clears throat> and uh, some of us engineers just have to fake it. Um, we're, we're secretly a little jealous of some of the architects who maybe have a little bit more personality, but we're proud of being good at math. <clears throat> So, you know, to talk, talk a little bit, so I have this, you know, huge list of uh, accomplishments um, from Pete during his career and during his uh, time here at Seacoast, which would be super boring and I won't read those to you. But I will talk a little bit about, um, about Pete and some of the things he's done and, uh, and why he's been so successful and why I know the staff is really, is really going to uh, miss him. And one of the things that was interesting, so whenever I'm going to have a speech like this, I'll, I'll go out and my staff will, will reach out to, to the staffs and try to get some good information on, on, the, uh, on the folks in the ceremony. And when it came to Pete, there was a lot of really good stuff in there from the staff. And it wasn't just that he accomplished this and accomplished that, but just, you know, I could tell a lot of sincere uh, respect and appreciation for everything you've done, Pete. And, I, and I've seen it. I come out to Seacoast Changes Command. I've seen it even, you know, in the students and the staff. Um, and it's one of those things, those of you who have been in the, in the military for a while, when you go to a command, you can sense it. And uh, that probably says as much of anything about what Pete has done. But, you know, some of the reasons Pete's been successful, he really does know our business, and that translates into what we see here at Seacoast. So I won't go through his whole career. I think that's also in the bio. But, but uh, both on the CB side and on the NAFAC side, Pete's done almost everything. He knows our business. But more than that, he has an energy and a, and a dynamic component to him 
um, passionate, he cares. And I think that all comes out in, uh, in everything he's accomplished over the last three years. And probably most importantly, yes, Teresa. So thank you, Teresa, for also being part of that. If one's for you, I don't know. He's already invited me to have beer at 1300 today. So if not for you, I'm sure there'd be a whole lot more of that going on. And he probably wouldn't be where he was today. So you kind of keep him grounded. You keep him on the right track. So thank you so much for that. So, you know, without going into all the very specific accomplishments, you know, some of the things that Pete's done and really been, been very proactive with that is really looked at, you know, constant improvement of Seacoast and really looking at the curriculum from, from what is done at Seacoast. And you know, we from, from headquarters have given him some, some broad ideas of things we would like to do. But then Pete has just ran with that and, and uh, really revolutionized what's taught at Seacoast. You know, they're, they're shooting blanks at Seacoast again, so really enhancing the military training. Um, and then throughout all the coursework, you know, for the CBs as well, just that constant energy and constant drive to it for improvement. And, you know, when we read his award, it'll list all the accomplishments. But underneath all that is really who Pete is, always trying to drive to be better, to be better, to be better. And doing that in a way, so the feedback from the staff was, so sometimes you get people like that and they'll just wear the staff out, right? Um, but that's not the kind of leader Pete is. You can tell that he's done it in a way where he's inspired the staff, so they, he's empowered them. So, so that, all that energy and all that improvement is being driven from the bottom, but all under Pete's leadership. And in a way that, um, you know, they don't always meet his expectations, um, but when they don't, they, they know they haven't. And, and there's, you can tell there's a sincere desire to not disappoint him, so they all want to succeed. He's also got a way of, of continuing to encourage them and, and continue to drive them to be better all the time. Uh, another aspect, and this is maybe a little bit more of that architect of him coming in, is that Pete's also driven a lot of innovation. So those of you who know Pete, you know, he, he's, he's kind of, you know, he always wants the newest gadget. You know, he's got a nice truck. He's got a nice car. He always wants the newest, like, and you know, Teresa probably tries to have somehow keep your finances in check while Pete's always driving. But, but that also driving towards the newest, greatest, coolest gadgets. But that's also been really helpful at a place like Seacoast where you, know, you can easily sit back and just do things the way you've always done them. But Pete's always looked at, hey, how can we do this better? What's the cutting edge out in academia? And so you, you got, uh, I, think, I think our premier video operation here is now at Seacoast, believe it or not. And that's all because of Pete. And that's, that goes throughout the curriculum where he's always been trying to drive towards what's the best way to do things. Some of, the, some of the, his artistic side comes in. I see things when I come to, uh, come to the Seacoast Changes of Command where there's like, you know, different uh, sort of artistic things that show up in some of the, some of the uh, awards and plaques and everything. So across the board. And then I've already talked a little bit about, you know, one of Pete's real strengths, which is, um, the ability to create a strong team and really to drive that esprit de corps. And that's, I've seen it in all the classes, the Seacoast classes when I come out here, where, um, you know, the class, you know, graduates from Seacoast with a real pride in being a CB and being a CC officer. And, uh, and that just doesn't happen by accident. It's easy to just go through the motions, but you can see that, that Pete's been able to drive a culture here where that's instilled in the classes, where they come out of Seacoast really excited about what we do. And um, similarly with the staff, that the staff also has that esprit de corps um, that Pete's been behind. And I can tell you, you know, in our, in our current modern world, that's becoming more and more important. So not to pick on the youngsters out here, but the, you know, in our country right now, uh, we do not create enough um, technical professionals to do everything that needs to be done. So the days where you know, we have people lining up to come work with us, both on the civilian side and in the uniform side, that doesn't exist anymore. And you have to get people excited about uh, what we do in order to get them to come in in the first place and also to get them to stick around. And I think, Pete, what you've done here with, with getting folks that when they come to Seacoast, they are excited about what we do. You know, that's instrumental when it comes to not only training folks and, and uh, getting them excited about what we do, but also getting them to stay around because they understand um, that not only is what we do important, but it also can be a lot of fun and something we can take a lot of pride in. So thank you, Pete, um, for all you've done there. One area that Pete's really improved in too, so this is, you know, we're kind of in PCS season. And this is, you know, to do a PCS, to do a change of command in May is something of an accomplishment. And an area where Pete has at times struggled 
with trying to do timely reliefs. So I will, uh, I will tell you the whole story. You can join me you know, later on, and I'll tell you the whole story. But I had an extra three weeks in uh, Shel Camp Shelby in July and August um, that was due entirely to Pete's inability to uh, extricate himself from grad school and conduct a timely um, PCS. So um, I've, I've held that grudge for many years and continue to hold it. But I'm glad to see Pete learn from that. And now he's, he's early on his change of command. He's getting to his next job early. So really is uh, some great improvement there. And, and I will talk. I usually don't necessarily talk about uh, his next job. But so, so interesting, you know, if you, if you do the math, Pete's got, you know, 30 years in the Navy, which should mean he's going home. But uh, Pete was selected, and I don't know how Teresa feels about it. She's probably like, yeah, why not? But, but no, Pete you know, sincerely loves what he does, and was selected for a position that no CC officer has ever been selected for. So within our NAVFAC side, all of our um, acquisition contracting and also technical authority comes from an organization called the Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Research, Development, and Acquisition. So that's the organization with the Navy that's responsible for buying ships, buying submarines, buying aircraft. But they're also the ones responsible for all the work that we do in NAFAC. So I have a connection with them. Historically, though, it's been challenging because what we, the way that NAVFAC does work is somewhat different than the way that NAVC and NAVAIR do work when they're buying ships and submarines. And so there's been this constant effort to try to, you know, they educate us, we educate them. But Pete, for the first time ever, has been selected to be um, one of the senior staff there um, at ASNRDNA. So we've never had a CC officer do that because normally what they're, they're looking for people who know how to, you know, buy submarines and ships. So, so uh, it's really a testament to Pete's record that despite the fact that he's knows nothing about buying ships and submarines. But his, his record was so strong, and I, I sat in on the board, his record was so strong, they said, hey, he'll figure that out, but he's clearly a very talented leader, and we want him to do that. So, so Pete's gonna go beyond 30 years, and then uh, actually when he's done with that, he'll, he'll, never, he'll never wear an admiral uniform, I don't think, but he will, he will retire with the benefits of being a one-star admiral, so kind of cool thing there, too. So uh, thank you, Pete, for everything you've done. And, uh, I would be really concerned about how anybody's going to follow that if it wasn't somebody like Jeff Devinney. So uh, I talked about two of my very favorite people in the world are here on the stage with me. And I've known Jeff for a very long time. One of my second job in the Civil Engineer Corps was in Iceland. And uh, Lieutenant J.G. Devinney and Lieutenant Vanderlei were there together. And, uh, you know, from the very beginning, Jeff, Jeff was somebody that you could almost say he was like built for Seacoast. Um, not only is he very competent and knows our business, but, you know, similar to Pete, um, and even more so, Jeff, like, just breeze Navy, breeze CEC, breeze CBs. Out there, sometimes he acted more like a Marine than a CB, so he kind of breathed that, too. Uh, but, but somebody who just loves what we do, and then throughout his career, you know, has been you know, very operationally focused, done a lot of really uh, interesting jobs, including um, the, the engineer Indo at uh, Indo-PACOM, where he did a lot of work, interesting work for three years. So he's going to bring a lot to the table here at Seacoast with his background, um, really, really knows our business, both on the expeditionary side, um, the uh, NAFAC side, and then for Jeff, even the joint side. So a lot of us um, as civil engineer corps officers do not have a lot of joint time. So, so Jeff even you know, gets it from that highest level. And then not only that, but despite being an engineer, um, Jeff is another one of those people that actually has a personality. So uh, again, again, I think he was built for Seacoast. When we were in Iceland, so he's a retread here, um, we, he, he was sent out to uh, our, our boss there, who was John Edwards, those of you guys remember him. He was, he was also a Seacoast guy, and he saw Jeff, and he said, hey, Jeff, you were built for Seacoast. And uh, so sent him out here as the lieutenant, and I think he did some good work, along with uh, Admiral Vinaji, then Lieutenant Commander and Commander Vinaji at the time. Um, but again, even since then, it's been clear that Jeff is somebody who was just built for Seacoast and will do really, really well. And also because Heather. So, uh, so not only, and I, I mentioned Teresa and how much, you know, the Maculans are a team sport, uh, Davini's exactly the same. So from the very beginning in Iceland, you know, just in the same way that Jeff breathes and exudes Navy and CEC and CBs, Heather does the same thing. Um, and she is even the, uh, what is it, director of communications and marketing and everything else for the CB Foundation to this day. So somebody who continues. So they're, they're again, a team sport um, together. And so if, there, if ever there's a couple of families that were built to lead Seacoast, we have them here with us today. So Jeff, I uh, can't think of a better person to, uh, to take the reins from Pete and Seacoast and continue to, uh, to carry that on. And really, ultimately, 
to uh, to leave a legacy, which I know is part of what you want to do and, and what Heather wants to do too, and what you guys have already done, because all those ensigns that come through, you know, when you see that pride that come in, that's the legacy that's going to last for, for 20 or 30 years when you're apparently going off to Texas at some day. Apparently I was told there's going to be a lot of problems if he doesn't end up in Texas. So um, his family's here. So, <laughs> so anyway, really excited to have you here. And Pete, um, for all the great things you did, I think we're going to have you join me on join me up here on stage. I just took the XO's job here. But... <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of award. Attention to award. The President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Legion of Merit Gold Star in lieu of third award to Captain Peter J. Maculin, Civil Engineer Corps, United States Navy. For service as set forth in the following citation, for exceptionally meritorious conduct in the performance of outstanding service as Commander, Center for Seabees and Facilities Engineering, and Commanding Officer of Naval Civil Engineer Corps Officer School from August 2021 to May 2024. Demonstrating exceptional leadership and managerial ability, Captain Maculin led outreach to the officer enlisted communities inside and outside the Naval Construction Force to support career progression, rating expertise, and motivation for new sailors. He directed new initiatives to incorporate developing technology in the delivery of world-class training. Additionally, through his Any Device Anywhere Anytime initiative, he promoted the infusion of technology into learning, providing an improved student learning environment, better equipment, and the ability of student, students to retain learning as they integrate into the fleet. Furthermore, during a time of significant personnel reductions and fiscal constraints, Captain Maculin revamped organizational structure and manpower throughout the domain leading efforts to ensure proper manning and alignment to learning sites, to ensure effective use of scarce, scarce resources. The magnitude of his achievements, scope of the changes he led, and outstanding command climate will leave a positive legacy for years to come. By his superior leadership, keen judgment, and loyal dedication to duty, Captain Maculin reflected great credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. For the President, R.J. Cheeseman, Jr., Vice Admiral, United States Navy. Thanks, sir. I appreciate it. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Peter J. Maculin. All right, good morning again. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to stick to what I have down here a little bit just to make sure I stay on target and uh, I'll explain here in a second, but Admiral Vandaly, Admiral Banaji, Admiral Giorgio, I'm not sure if you're out there somewhere. Um, Commodore, Commanding Officers, Command Mass Chief, Distinguished Guests, and of course all the family and friends that attended today. I'm certainly honored that you all have taken time out of your busy schedule to come in uh, and celebrate this time-honored tradition with us up front. Fair warning though, this is my last change of command remarks that I will ever give, uh, so I'm going to go a little bit longer than I normally do. So fair warning up front. But before I do that, Ready? Everyone's going to wave. We're going to do a selfie. <laughs> this side first. Hey! All right, this side next. Hey! All right, up front. Woo! All right. All right, so um, first off, let me say that it was uh, an absolute honor to stand here and accept this award, but I have to say that it is certainly not mine to accept. I have to acknowledge that the recognition belongs to each and every person on this team, both those that are currently serving at CSFE and Seacoast and on those that have uh, already PCS on since I've gotten here. Receiving the awards, uh, uh, not just a testament to your accomplishments, it's a celebration of the teamwork, collaboration, and the power of our collective efforts together. We came together and there's no limit to what we can achieve and I think you all have proven that over the last three years and for that I thank you. So three years ago, we stood here in Port Wayne Emi on the same spot when uh, Mr. Kurgan was up on the stage with me. And uh, I accepted the command colors and pledged to take the mantle and responsibility as your commander. So, so much has transpired in the last three years. During that time, our family, and I say family, for Seacoast and CSFE has grown exponentially in many ways. I'm amazed not only at the depth of all of our accomplishments, but the breadth and the scope of everything that you all do every day. So in three short years, we have, just a couple of stats, 37,198 students throughput, 
2,167 course convenes in the three years I've been here. Under CSFE, you all have implemented the A3, Any Device, Anywhere, Anytime initiative, infusing technology into the domain so that we can teach to, this, to the young generations as they learn, not as we learned. SECOS, 11 newer revised course convenes that we've gotten palmed and funded. The leadership continuum, looking at Mach 1, day one as an ensign, to day 30 as a captain. How are we gonna go ahead and continue to train the leadership within our, in our family and our community? We achieved the full operational capability of the broadcast studio. So in all fairness, that's not mine from the get-go. So uh, Chris Kurgan, Captain Kurgan, uh, kicked it off and I just took what he had and continued to build on it. Although I, I am more charismatic, I have hair, so a little more charismatic. <laughs> I know I just pissed half y'all off, but that's all right. <laughs> NCTC Port Wainimi delivered 326 accessions and uh, cost course offerings, 5,250, not only the Navy, but the joint services as well. Also in Wainimi, they uh, restructured their organization and took the Learning Center at China Lake and uh, shifted them from CSFE to Port Wainimi. Shepherd Air Force Base a long time uh, support agreement between the 82nd training wing and CSFE was finally reestablished. Took three years to get it done, but y'all got it done. You brought it across the finish line. And then of course, as we've chatted about many times, the times that we normally have to cover for the Air Force since their instructors are, uh, they're having more challenging manpower problems than we do. Fort Leonard Wood, change the landscape, change the mindset campaign an incredible uh, initiative that went ahead and worked with the museum here to get some pieces out to Fort Leonard Wood so that the students could understand our history, where they're coming out from, and they could see the family that they're about to enter. And then also at Fort Leonard Wood, the community engagement there with the, uh, with the staff, not only the senior staff, but the staff itself, NMTs and instructors has just been incredible, reaching out to the community and making sure that our presence as a Navy organization is known on that base. NCTC Gulfport, you did the uh, support agreement for expeditionary combat skills and shoving it where it finally belongs. That was a, a royal pain in the neck. Where's Trey? Captain Johnson. There we go. Uh, you brought that across the finish line. It took three long years to do it, but it was the right thing to do, and you persevered through it. I appreciate it. You also uh, took a look at the, uh, the Builder uh, Composite ASVAB score as it changed, and you implemented the supplemental training academic resources, uh, something to help the youngsters with their math and make sure they were getting up to speed. Now, I'm not going to say that since the builder composite ASFAB went down that we're going to get dumber builders. <laughs> yeah, that's right, I said it. <laughs> I'm just, just kidding, just kidding. Uh, NCTC Gulfport also had uh, 680 high school students across 13 regional uh, junior ROTC programs. The, the outreach there to go ahead and everyone is a recruiter at NCTC Gulfport has been amazing, right? They just have that coordination out in town, that relationship with the folks out in town to get uh, a population that maybe normally wouldn't be thinking about going Navy to join Navy. The Learning Center, uh, reinvigorating the training review requirements was an incredible feat. A uh, new hybrid approach for ready, relevant learning. So um, the seven shop and the five shop, new hybrid approach for SW. Uh, we're leading, or we, uh, we put in a fleet study for the center as well to uh, institute a new learning management system Navy-wide. And this is going to take into account machine learning and AI technology. So our e ra EA rating that's going to go through RRL is going to be done by an AI program to see how it works out. So just really the cutting edge in this area. It's unbelievable. So none of those accomplishments, though, came without their set of challenges to the staff, for sure. As grueling as the situation seemed at time, I look back at the period when I saw the most cohesive, professional, dedicated, and focused team who put their technical and leadership skills to the test, and you passed with flying colors every single time, regardless of what was thrown at us. It's a testament to your hard work, your sense of service, esprit de corps, and I'm proud to have worked side by side with each and every one of you day by day. So command is certainly always a privilege and an honor. But part of that honor today for me is passing the reins to an extremely talented and gifted Navy family. So Captain Davini is certainly a visionary. He's a leader with foresight and integrity, and he's the perfect fit for CSFE and Seacoast again. So Jeff and Heather, welcome back to CSFE and Seacoast. 
Teresa and I certainly wish you the best as you take over what I certainly consider to be the best job in the Civil Engineer Corps. So there are a lot of people that deserve special thanks this morning, uh, but if I were to mention them all, we'd certainly be here all day, so I won't do that. But there are a couple of folks that I need to call out and, and thanks. So many thanks to Commander Honick, Lieutenant Commander McGuire, Lieutenant Commander Meckel, Kathleen Davenport, uh, Pastor Bundy, CM1 Hughes, the Chief's Mess, the wardroom, and the entire team that worked effortless, effortless. <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't been drinking. Um, effortlessly to put this together. So what, what you didn't see is this was all set up yesterday. We did the practice, and then they broke it all down again so that if there was morning dew, nothing would be wet, and they set it all back up again this morning. So, Teresa, you've certainly been my rock, a steady presence throughout my career. Your strength, resilience, and unwavering belief in our mission have been a source of inspiration to me and all those around you. Your willingness to stand by me through thick and thin is just one of the many things I admire and love about you. However, during this tour, your contribution certainly extended past uh, supporting myself. You've also played a pivotal role as a sort of curriculum developer, developer and instructor yourself. So shaping the minds and the futures of countless spouses through your self-developed training programs. Your dedication to the spouse growth and development is certainly nothing short of remarkable. And the impact of your work will be felt for years and decades to come. Your efforts have gone above and beyond to prepare the next generation of spouses for the challenges that lie ahead and supporting all the future Navy teams that will enter the Navy fleet soon. While my staff was busy preparing the next generation of CEC officers and CBs for the fleet, you were busy equipping the next generation of spouses with the skills, knowledge that they would thrive as part of our CEC family. So on behalf of the entire CEC family, not just me, I want to extend my heartfelt thanks to you. Your contributions have not only strengthened our community, but have also enriched the lives of those you touched along the way. Your impact is immeasurable, and your legacy will endure long after this tour. Oh, and, oh yeah, I love you. <laughs> Amy, you are the epitome of professionalism. <laughs> what, my nose isn't growing, is it? All right. I have, I've had so much fun working with you the past two years. It's just been amazing. Your dedication, unwavering commitment to excellence, and your ability to handle just about anything has been so impressive uh, and uh, so inspiring, and you've done it all with grace. For that, I'd like to say thank you. Uh, it seemed like there was nothing I couldn't throw at you that you couldn't figure out or get accomplished. Your willingness to share your knowledge and mentor others speaks volumes about the kind of person and officer that you are. And then there's your honesty. Raw, unfiltered, and brutally honest. <laughs> While some may shy away from the whole truth, you wield it like a double-edged sword, much like your knife hand, cutting through the noise and getting straight to the heart of the matter. So thank you for everything. And just between you, me, and the however many people that are watching this, you're certainly the better of the two Honics. <laughs> Sorry, Kenny, if you're out there somewhere. <laughs> Command Mass Chief. So thank you for your counsel, your friendship, and support and guidance over the past three years. I, I can't put the words how much fun I've had working with you and the great things that we've accomplished together. I've learned so much from you, both professionally and personally, and I'm truly grateful for the opportunity to have served these three years with you in the schoolhouse. I'm also... <laughs> what do you say? He said he loves you. Oh, hang on, I'm getting to that, not yet. I'm also grateful for your tire changing abilities and for our trip to Uranus. No, not his anus. There's actually a city called Uranus. No, stop. We have, you don't believe me, we have pictures. You can see them later. However, I am not grateful for your always wearing a metal belt buckle and boots that contain more metal than a U.S. mint when we traveled as these always guaranteed you take it forever going through TSA pre-check, and on that very special occasion, you getting patted down by a TSA agent. <laughs> Seriously, I wish you all the best of luck, brother. 
Um, as you get nearer to your retirement, the things that you've done for the Navy and our community has been just off the charts. So thank you very much. Darren, where's Darren? There we go. Darren, although you haven't been aboard very long, it's been a pleasure to work with you in the time frame. I trust that you're going to take care of the command in this family and continue to lead them to higher achievements. Kathleen, where's Kathleen at? There we go. What can I say except thank you? So what I'll miss most about working with you is your infectious sense of fun. Despite any challenges, you always manage to find the joy in the journey. Your laughter filled the room. Your sarcasm and wit brought levity on the most challenging of days. And your ability to see the silver lining reminded me never to take myself too seriously. You are only second to Teresa for being able to handle and take care of me. <laughs> and for that, I'm forever grateful. It's been an honor and a privilege to work beside you, and I will certainly cherish all the memories I have. All right, to the wardroom. I've witnessed unwavering dedication, professionalism, and camaraderie that define our wardroom family. Whether it was navigating the challenging waters or celebrating our triumphs along the way, your collective strength and commitment have certainly been a source of inspiration for me. Each of you brings unique talents and perspectives to our team, enriching work and fostering a culture of excellence every single day. Your leadership, integrity, and unwavering support have not only shaped our mission, but also strengthened the bonds of our friendship among us. I'm deeply grateful for the privilege to serve with each and every one of you, and I wish you all the best as you continue on with your naval careers. To the mess. I want to express my heartfelt gratitude for everything you've done. Your unwavering support, guidance, and leadership, and at many times, your jackassery. <laughs> I thought I was going to get more of a laughter than that, but right, it's fine. All of it has made a significant and positive impact and long-lasting on me. From the moment I joined the CSFE Seacoast family, I was greeted with your camaraderie. Your dedication to upholding the values of the Navy and fostering a spirit of unity is more than admirable. It's truly unbelievable. Your wealth of knowledge and experience has been invaluable in helping me navigate the challenges and triumphs of Naval service during this tour. Whether offering words of wisdom, lending me a helping hand, or just standing off to the side and laughing at me incessantly, you've always been there, and I appreciate that. I'm grateful beyond words. However, beyond your professional expertise, it is your genuine care and concern for the well-being of our CBs that sets you all apart. You lead by example, instilling a sense of duty, honor, and pride in our service. Thank you for everything you do. To all the men and women, both our GS employees and contractors of CSFE and Seacoast, you have a reputation throughout the Navy for your professionalism, your commitment to our mission, and your tremendous work ethic. Your hard work is reflected in the CB, CEC, and civilian legacy that you continue to grow through our courses and your personal and family sacrifices as well. Thanks to every one of you for what you do for our country, our Navy, and of course our CSFE and Seacoast family. I have many great memories to take with me, all of the amazing things that we've accomplished over the past three years, and I cannot put into words how humbled I am to have worked with you, how proud I am of all of you, and if only for a few years, how special I have felt to be part of your family. Admiral Vanderly, again, I want to thank you again for coming out and presiding over the uh, ceremony. You've certainly given me the, one of the highest privileges of representing this group, leading the schoolhouse for the last couple of years with the best training professionals that I've certainly ever met. So it's been a privilege and an honor to serve as your commander and one that I will never forget. I wish you all fair winds and following seas until we meet again. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you for all you do. I will now read my orders. Buper's order, three, five. Sorry, that's your line. I will now read my, read my orders. Scratch that from oh, the Oh, you script, scratched sir. it? Yeah. It's still on this one. <laughs> okay, all right, work with it. Got it. Got it. 
Buper's order 3523. Official change of orders for Captain Peter J. Maculin, Civil Engineer Corps, United States Navy. When directed by reporting senior, detached in May 2024 from Center for Seabees and Facilities Engineering, report not later than June 2024 to Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Research, Development and Acquisition, Washington, D.C. for duty. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Jeffrey Devinney, Civil Engineer Corps, United States Navy. I will now read my orders. Bupers Order 3523, official change of duty orders for Captain Jeffrey C. Devinney, Civil Engineer Corps, United States Navy. When directed by reporting senior, detached in May 2024 from Naval Construction Group 2, Gulfport, Mississippi, report not later than May 2024 to Center for Seabees and Facilities Engineering, Port Wanimi, California. Captain Maculin, I'm ready to relieve you. Command Master Chief Kadena, deliver the command callers to the commander. Throughout history, military units have carried distinctive organizational colors representative of their pride and accomplishments. These colors were prominently displayed in times of peace and at the forefront of unit battle lines. History records many epic struggles in which brave men and women fought tenaciously to keep their colors flying. The colors are being passed from Captain Maculin to Captain Divini to represent the transfer of command. By accepting these colors, Captain Divini is not merely assuming the authority of command. He is also assuming responsibility for protecting the colors and maintaining the high standards and proud traditions which have been trademarks of the United States Navy for the past 249 years. Left or right face. Sir, I believe you. I'm ready to be relieved. Or stand relieved. Admiral, I've been properly relieved as the commander, Center for CVs and Facilities Engineering, and commanding officer, Civil Engineer Corps Officer School. You're welcome. Thanks, sir. Sir, I've assumed command of the Center for CVs and Facilities Engineering and the Civil Engineer Corps Officer School. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commander, Center for Seabees and Facilities Engineering, and Commanding Officer, Naval Civil Engineer Corps Officer School. Woo. Good morning, everybody. Uh, so, so when when Pete said his speech was going to be long, um, that you know, I had to kind of figure out. It, I'm already going to have a short time span to speak and so I was like well how much am I gonna actually have but I think that I don't, I don't know if I'd call that long I was that was about right long so for me. okay long for you okay good well good morning everybody good morning Admiral Vanderlei uh, commanding officers CMC's friends family uh, it is great to be here this cool California morning um, in Gulfport Mississippi it's uh, I just checked, it's 84 degrees with 90% uh, humidity. There's no way we would have all that displayed out there. We'd be in a theater right now. Um, it is outstanding to be here. Uh, I can't tell you how happy we are uh, to come back. Um, there's some things we gotta get used to. Uh, Trey Johnson, Captain Johnson, what's the price of gas in Gulfport, Mississippi right now? $3. Yeah, three, three dollars, right? And that's expensive. That's super expensive in Gulfport, $3 gas. We gotta get used to that, but that's okay. This is our, fir our fourth tour in Wyoming. Um, I did two tours in MCB3, and I was an instructor here. We're out three. All right. I, I see Lori Scott, another three be there, and, and a lot of others uh, as well. Uh, Pete Saunders back in the day. Um, so we haven't been back since 2010, and I didn't think we would ever come back. Um, I didn't ever think the Maculins would leave. Um, but but luckily, uh, luckily you got this cool new job. I, may, I don't know if they made it up to, to get you to leave, but whatever it is, awesome for us. So thank you. Really appreciate it. Um, I, I really want to say first uh, to thank Admiral Vanderlei for giving me the opportunity to command the schoolhouse. Um, it, it has always been our dream job. Uh, and I'll talk about how we, we didn't really think this was going to happen just because of timing. Um, and so thanks for the confidence. Uh, we are so looking forward to it. Thanks to Pete and Teresa for a great turnover. We've done this before. It's my second time in a row following in his footsteps. NCG2 was the last time. Um, I know I'm inheriting a high-performing team because that's what they produce, um, both, both of them working in tandem. Uh, it's not going to happen again, though. So I'll look in the camera. I'm, I'm, not, going to, I'm not going to D.C. to relieve you again. <laughs> not not going to happen. 
Um, they will revoke my Texas citizenship, and I got a lot of folks uh, that uh, want to see us back there um, when we hit 30 in a couple years. Um, so I want to thank uh, my parents, Frank and Nancy, for coming. Uh, Heather's parents, Walt and Cheryl, for coming out here. They're bringing our kids. They're watching our pets. All these things they've done for us uh, in 28 years. We keep storing stuff at their house, at their houses. They don't. They're like, you got more stuff? Where do you put all this stuff? And and yet we're still overweight. Um, and anyway, it's a whole thing. You'll you'll see. You'll get to know us better. Um, but uh, it's it's what it is. Uh, we have. Uh, uh, two of my three kids here, Jared, his girlfriend, Emily, she's not my kid, um, but uh, just graduated from Texas Tech University, Harvard on the Plains, like myself and my wife, Heather. Uh, just had a, so we, we had a fun party with them on Saturday and then uh, came really, really quickly across the desert to be here on a, on a quick two-day drive with the U-Haul trailer. Uh, so uh, it was great to do that. Now we're here, lots of celebration going on this week, and so it's really, uh, really amazing that y'all are here. My parents took them to Vegas. They're uh, on the way here. Uh, since they're here, I assume they didn't win, um, but uh, that's, that's for the best. That's all for the best. So uh, our youngest, Ethan, is here. And he'll be a sophomore in high school. Uh, we, he's excited to be in Southern California in a, in a new environment. And then we have Corbin, our oldest. He's in flight school in Corpus Christi. So he went to the Naval Academy. It's really hard to be a civil engineer corps officer from the Naval Academy unless there's something wrong with you, right? You got to have like uh, some bad legs or knees or eyes or something. Uh, and so it was really kind of a, a very small chance he would be a, a civil engineer corps officer. But I, I was just hoping that he would do it. And then he didn't survive first contact with calculus. And so now, now he's at flight school. He thinks being a pilot is cooler than being an engineer. I say that's fake news, <laughs> right? You know what I'm talking about. All right, uh, let's see. But I'm proud of all those of these young men we've raised together, and I'm happy that y'all are here, guys. Uh, we have other friends, Molly and Kelly from Texas, our Navy family, Jen, Luis Tatats, and Kim Ficarelli, the Ravellises came, and I'll talk about the Saunders and some others. Uh, there's a few folks I'm really excited to, to be here. Uh, I'm extremely excited to have retired Marine Corps Colonel Willie Buell here. Um, so Willie and I, that's a crazy thing that nobody tells you about being a captain, right? So you're, you're, you're a J.O. and you're a lieutenant commander, and the whole time, you know, you look up to these folks, and then all of a sudden you're in as long as they are, and you get to call them by their first names. It's super weird. Uh, so it's like, it's like for a minute, it was, it, was, it was like, hey, Dean, what's going on? And then Dean made Admiral. It's like, okay, it's, hey, sir, what's up? You're Russ, sir. Um, but, like, I would have never expected to call Willie Buell um, Willie. Um, because we were, it was so long ago. We were all together in Iceland, Admiral Vanderlei, Mike Mino and us, um, over 20 years ago. It's unbelievable to think about that. But uh, Willie fought in Desert Shield, Desert Storm, Somalia. He commanded the 3rd Battalion, the 1st Marines, uh, the Thunder and 3rd, I believe is what you call them, during the Battle of Fallujah in 2004, commanded the, the Fighting 5th Marine Regiment and the Marine Corps Wounded Warrior Regiment. And he continues to give back to the Marine Corps by teaching at the Expeditionary Warfare School at Camp Pendleton. And, and, and more importantly, what he did was when he was, he commanded the Marine Corps Security Force in Iceland uh, in uh, oh, uh, 99 through 01 or something like that. And he took young Lieutenant J.G. Davini under his wing and he took me to these crazy training opportunities in, in Cambridge, England, uh, some, some PME, some uh, education in uh, wandered around Normandy and Bella Wood and uh, really just showed me what inspirational leadership is and where all the best pubs in uh, England were, and uh, just a renaissance man, and so glad that you were able to come up. It, it's motivating. You were here, you're I and I here, right, in Port Wenemi? That's right, for the Marine Corps. Uh, and, and another one uh, I'll park on uh, for a second is uh, Pete and Cindy Saunders, um, who turned over command of CSFE. He stood up CSFE, right, yeah, back in 2003. Building 1,000, is that the, still the number? Is this building 1,000? What's it called? Building, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> Seacoast. It was a lot. It was a lot sleepier back then. Uh, you, it, it's. I'm sure Pete got tired of me, you know, going around and saying this wasn't there when I was here because we taught here like 20 years ago. Um, but so he was my boss when he was here, and Admiral Benaji's boss. Um, it was a great retirement. The speech was great. It was hilarious. It probably would have gone viral, I think, if that was a thing back then. Had a great top 10 list. Um, but, but then he did something that's, that's really left a not necessarily a good impression on me. Heather just mentioned it last night. He gave Cindy a jeweled Tiffany B as a retirement gift. Heather mentioned this last night. Do you remember the jeweled Tiffany B? She just, she just said that. So 
So CEC officers, what does CEC stand for sometime? Chief Engineer Corps, <laughs> right? If anybody knows Pat Guerin, Captain Pat Guerin retired, he's still driving the same, uh, the same Toyota pickup truck that he's had since 1982. And, and, and Pete gives her a Tiffany B, and you set the bar way too high, way too high, all right? Um, but, it, but, but, but really what I wanted to say is he and Cindy were everything Heather and I aspire to be as a Navy family. Um, it, was, uh, it was, I remember thinking back then, when, when you retired, I was like, that is something I want to do. Um, I want to be that guy someday. And um, the, the funny thing was, as a young lieutenant, it's like, but there's no way, that dude's super old, you know? Um, <laughs> But you don't look any different, honestly, Pete. But, uh, and then, and then you, you, you get here and you're like, oh man, I'm one of the old guys. Um, and uh, Pete's older than me, by the way. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, but, you know, time flies when you're having fun and here we are and, and get, getting to take command of a CSFE and Seacoast, uh, it, is, it is our dream job. It almost didn't turn out that way. We were supposed to ride into the sunset as public works officer of, of Annapolis, living it up at the Naval Academy, um, but in April of last year, Heather was diagnosed with breast cancer, and all of a sudden we went from preparing to PCS to undergoing chemotherapy, surgery, radiation, all of the things that suck about cancer. Um, thankfully, through the support of our Navy family, and I, and I, I love the Pete's use of family here, because I, you know, you, you get in the Navy because of various things, uh, but you stay in the Navy because of the people you meet there, and without the people we met, and they were supporting us, along with our family and friends. Obviously, couldn't have done it without y'all, but we stayed in, in Gulfport, and Heather won the battle against cancer, and so she's cancer-free now. So, um. so and, and she's doing all this crazy stuff. Well, she's, she's, um, she, she earned a presidential... 600-hour National Volunteer Award for Navy and Marine Corps Relief while she was doing this. Um, let's see, she works full-time uh, for the U.S. Navy CB Foundation. She does a lot of stuff with the Spousal Club, although I don't know if a wine night um, counts as volunteering, <laughs> just saying, and being a great mom and wife. So thanks, I love you. Um, but as terrible as that ordeal was, um, it allowed for a door to open, us, open uh, here for us at CSFE. Uh, we firmly believe, and we've taught our kids this, uh, that, that for whatever reason, if something happens to you, um, w whether you call it fate or God's will, depending on, on your belief, um, things are going to happen that, 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 that matter. Uh, so the worst thing that ever happened to us brought us here to this day, um, to where we always wanted to be. So I cannot be more proud to take the reins of CSFE, um, to come back to Gulfport, see all these familiar faces. I see Marty Yingling out here and all these former COs. I see Eric Bailey out there, Mass Chief. I still can't believe you're a Mass Chief, hoorah. Um, um, but uh, all these familiar faces. Uh, and it's so great to be here. So it was my last job as Commodore of Naval Construction Group 2 um, showed me how important it is to provide timely, relevant, quality training to our sailors, Marines, and civilians. Because CSFE teaches more than just Navy. We teach the Marine Corps, we teach a joint force, um, we, we teach civilians everywhere. We must provide the foundational training that will allow us to build and repair the facilities, runways, and ports that the combatant commanders need in the future fight. Seabees were born in the Pacific Island hopping campaign of World War II. And although Seabees have performed outstanding work in Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, and multiple other places throughout the years, we've now come full circle back to those original island hopping routes. And for over 80 years, the training commands under the CSFE umbrella have been the building blocks of the can-do spirit of the Seabees and the Civil Engineer Corps officers who fight and win our nation's wars. I'm confident we have the crew in place to continue to make this training happen, and I can't wait to get started working with all of you to do it. So thanks again for coming to celebrate with us today. I hope to see you afterwards at the reception. XO, Sound Liberty Call for the rest of the day for all military and authorized 59-minute early release for CSFE, CSFE civilians. God bless you all. God bless the United States Navy. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Bosun, post the side, boys.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the benediction and remain standing for the departure of the official party. Let us pray. God, we thank you for a wonderful ceremony today. We celebrate both of these men and their families and their commitment to service. And we ask for your blessing and hand of protection on them both. I also ask for your blessing on this command and for all the service members that serve here. I pray for them and for their families. I pray that you would bless their work, but even more so than that, I pray that you would help them to find the peace and joy and purpose in their lives, the types of things that can be found in you, their maker. God, we thank you for the privilege of life. We thank you for the privilege of a relationship with you and we thank you for this wonderful ceremony that we've been able to partake in today. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Time orderly sounds six bells. <laughs> Naval Facilities Engineering Systems Command departing. Time orderly, sound four bells. Center for Seabees and Facilities Engineering and Naval Civil Engineer Corps Officer School, departing. Time orderly, sound four bells. Captain, Civil Engineer Corps, United States Navy, departing. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the ceremony. Thank you for attending. Please join us inside Morrell Hall for light refreshments.